All right, it's Billy Ray Bates at the Motor City Comic Con with Mr. Robert Hayes of the Airplane this Movies. The, the audio impaired, this is the name up here. <laughs> To help you, out. you know, it seems like there's somewhere in the airplane movies that you had maybe a line that people remember. What was that? What was that? What are you known for? Did I had a line? You had a line. You had a couple lines in that. I did. Right? Yeah, I think oh, you did. Oh no, now, surely, you, surely you can't be serious. Surely, I don't know. Well, I mean, surely you remember. I know. Just don't call me Shirley. I know. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> let's talk about airplane a little bit. Airplane. What airplane, was that? The movie. What was that experience of like? Did you ever imagine that it would become so huge? Oh, of course, it, we knew. We knew immediately. Wow. What was it like being <laughs> on the set? Of, I think I can't believe a word this if guy anybody, says. <laughs> if anybody knows that it's going to be huge, it's going to be hit, then they can control the world. Nobody ever knows that stuff. Okay. So, we figured as we went along, we thought, you know, this is actually kind of funny. Maybe it's going to be a, a cult following, maybe on college campuses or something. Mm. But. Um, when it came out, it broke the records of every box office that it played in, and it became the the highest money-making comedy of all time. Wow. And it was that for years and years. And I don't know what has su surpassed it, but um, if you think about how much, how much uh, a ticket cost then, how much a ticket costs now, how many actually how many people have seen it compared yeah. to the other one? Yeah, see, then you then thing. yeah then you have a different kind of a deal. Yeah, and, and yes, I do. Um, Andrea, how, while you were filming a scene, uh, was it difficult to not crack up, or or? Just, how could you keep a straight yeah, face how, on how a parody? Keep a straight like face. That? He's doing it. <laughs> He's showing us. He's biting his tongue. Just like that. Um, <laughs> oh, that's what you, well. I came from the stage, and on stage. When you're doing a play, you do nine shows a week, and you're doing it for weeks and weeks and months. It's very unprofessional, but everyone does it. You're going to do little things to do, just to try to crack up the other actors. And just to keep things alive for you on stage. The audience doesn't know anything about it except that, oh, there's something fun going on on stage. And uh, so you learn to keep a straight face. So you're actually trained. I see. You know, that's that's one of the one of the most important training elements of training for actors is to keep a straight I face. <laughs> so. And and tell us why there wasn't an airplane three. I had been hounded by paparazzi by the the press constantly. It was unfortunate, but they would say, "So Robert Airplane Hayes, do you think you'll ever do anything besides airplane? Are you ever going to become a real actor?" I mean, they were being kind of rude and kind of vicious like the press can often be yeah, even though there are a lot that are really wonderful but um, I actually fell for it it got to me and I was in London doing a film and I had stacks of scripts lined up and and um, so I thought yeah I want to be a real actor so they were negotiating to do the third one and I kept turning it down and it kept getting higher and higher in the money oh man I wish I would have done it because I think yeah. back on how much that was yeah. but um, so I just wound up not doing it that means the pizza is ready. <laughs> okay. It is getting to be dinner time. <laughs> okay, let's talk about another big, huge movie that you did, maybe unexpectedly big. You think um, this is water, don't you? Oh. <laughs> it's actually hand sanitizer. You can really get a. He's got a strong hot. stomach. <laughs> okay, I want to talk about Sharknado, Sharknado of the beautiful collection of sci fi creature features. They, they called up, this was, uh, gosh, I don't know, a few months ago. I don't remember how long ago it was. Several months ago. Um, they called up and wanted me to do a cameo in this thing called Sharknado. And I said, I've heard of that, but I don't know anything about it. And I told my son, I said, yeah, they want me to do a cameo in a thing called Sharknado. He's 23. He was 22, I think, at the time. He just turned 23. And... And, and uh, I said, yeah, they want me to do a cameo in Sharknado. And he said, you got to do it. you got to do it. And I said, well, what is it? He said, oh, it's this, this campy, goofy thing. It's just so bad. It's good. It's just great. And so I said, okay. So I did it for my son. And Ian Ziering, who I had never worked with, but I knew from years ago, he was a wonderful guy and a really wonderful actor. And uh, he was starring in it again. And... Uh, uh, the director, Tony, uh, was wonderful. I loved him. And the producers, all of them were great. 
and we were filming it. It was, it was the opening, the teaser, the opening shot of the film, and it's me as, a, <laughs> as a pilot of a airline. Oh, how ironic! Yeah. So they, they, that was their little in joke. The producer said, "No, we can't do that to him. We can't do that." And the director said, "But I wanted for this. It would be perfect." So anyway, uh, we did that. Judd Hirsch. Oh, Judd yeah. is a wonderful actor. Judd okay. is in it, and uh, a lot of people are in it. And uh, I guess they got a lot more people because the first one was so successful. Yeah. Yeah. So we shot it at a place over in um, Chatsworth, uh, Pacoima, actually, in the north, in the valley, just, you know, northern part of LA, okay. where they had a, an old studio. It was, it was like a warehouse. They turned it into a studio, mm -hmm. which they do a lot over there. And, and the guy, about 30 years ago, started collecting sets that had to do with, that took place in airplanes. And Airplane was the first set that he got. And then he got other ones. So he has all sorts of airliners, big ones, you know, all sorts of airliners and helicopters and everything. So we were filming in this airliner set, which is a new, like, maybe a 757 or something, right next to the airplane set, the original. Oh, my gosh. And oh, so oh somebody wanted a picture. One of the crew wanted a picture of me. And it's oh, it's the only one that says something. It says airplane. Oh, oh no. my God. So he wanted a picture with me. And so I said, sure. So we took a picture. And then I, we were going to walk back over. And I noticed another person said, can I have one, too? And I said, sure. And then I noticed people lining up. So pretty soon the whole crew. Is he standing there sweating, pouring sweat? No. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, was, these were sweatless. Yeah, OK. And uh, so then I had the whole crew and the, the cast that was there just the people that were there and uh, the producers and the director and everybody we all wanted pictures in front of it so it was fun it was a lot of fun but the guys were so great to work with and Anthony Tony who was the director was just really fun I really really liked him a lot I like the producers a lot so actually they have other things we may do some other stuff they do a lot of things that uh, that company does a lot of stuff, so we might do something else. There's some things that they were talking about, and then I have a few other things that I'm working on on my own that okay. um, we'll talk about when they get closer to fruition. Ah, uh, okay. Old, uh, put the old kibosh on them. You know. Okay, well here's something safe to talk about. Let's step back for a second to the 1970s, and the TV show the is Wayback Machine. Wonder yes. Woman with yes. the beautiful Linda Carter. Mm. What do you remember? Of uh, it, it was an episode, and it was in the first, you know, when they were in 1940s. They brought it, it up the to, season. they modernized yeah. it later, which was better in the 40s. I loved the 40s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. And they were doing a film. They'd come to Hollywood to do a film uh, about four Medal of Honor recipients. Lyle Wagner was a That regular. was a Wonder Girl episode. Yes. Deborah Winger. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was just about to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, but, but I was I was I was the guest star, uh, the guest star schmuck. <laughs> I was the guest star young young guy that I won this this. Uh, I had received the Medal of Honor for something I did not feel that I deserved, uh. and so I had that guilt thing going on, and that was my whole deal in the show. Lyle Wagner, who's on the the show, of, of course, was super duper everything. So he, of course, was a Medal of Honor recipient. Mm -hmm. And then two other guys. Um, one, his wife was a casting director in real life. And the other, his wife was a dark haired girl who later bleached it out blonde uh, by the name of Lonnie Anderson. Oh my goodness. And so I'd hang out with them over at their house and have dinner all the time. She was a great cook. And uh, good looking. Uh, either blonde or as a brunette. I mean, she's yeah. good, great, great looking. Is it before Burr Reynolds came in? See, long before. She was, yeah. she was yeah. married. Yeah. No, she was married yes. Yes. Uh, to this guy. So, so we were the four guys. And my love interest in it was Wonder Girl, who comes from the island to visit her sister, and that was Deborah Winger. And, uh, so you so, were kind of babysitting her in a way. You were taking care of her. You were taking her to the uh, city. me. Because she was supposed to be keeping she was an eye to be on me, watching you, yeah, to and make I was, sure that you and I, and, and I was supposed to be kind of keeping her occupied so she wouldn't get into trouble. Right. right. So that that's was that. So, you guys so were it was, out. yeah, that was that kind of a thing. So I think that was her first role. That was I mean, her, not her first episode. Yeah, no, first. I think she she'd done she'd done some other little tiny things, I think, 
But uh, yeah, that was long before she became Deborah Winger that everyone knows. And of course, there's R2-D2. Oh, yeah, you might want to swing R2. around and see this. Yeah, I'm part of the Star Wars club. <laughs> did you, oh, did you see this? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's R2 Builders Club. Oh, yes, so yes. And then, I've never seen good and old then, R2. And then you were on an episode of The Love Boat, right? Yeah. Tell us yes. about The Love Boat. The love boat. Tell us about The Love Boat. I'm fascinated by R2-D2 over here. <laughs> yes. so I just wanted to talk about R2. I just want to know, where is the guy that's controlling him? Oh, he's, oh, he's a little bug. He's very yeah. good. Oh, I think I see him. Is he over there? Yeah. Is he in the oh, yeah. black jacket with the tan pants? Somebody with so. a little... Yeah, you yeah, should turn it and zoom little in little on him. Bug. You should turn it and zoom in on him. And zoom in on R2. <laughs> on the guy over with there. the tan pants and the black jacket, the bald head. He's wearing a bald head. He's wearing a bald... Yeah. Just for this weekend, though. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so, love boat. Tell us we want to hear love everything. Boat. What were you doing on the love boat? The girl and I were having our honeymoon, and the cabin boy that we had was played by Bob Crane of Hogan's oh Heroes, yes. who it winds up was actually her father who had left, had run off when she was little. Oh so God. that was our deal. Then they had, they had, um, they kind of juggled it around. So they had a woman come on who was the 400th guest star. And it was Helen Hayes, the great Helen Hayes. And so they had a party at the Beverly Hills Hotel, big black tie event, uh -huh. celebrating the 400th guest star of Love Boat, wow. a, a oh tribute to Helen Hayes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so all the dance floor in the middle, all these tables here and all these tables here, and you'd walk down into the ballroom, and the, the, the band, the big orchestra was up here, and I was over visiting somebody on this side. I was sitting over here, visiting somebody on this side. And when I walked back, I saw the table, like 10 people at the table. And there were one guy was just kind of looking off, two guys talking. One was her son, James MacArthur, talking to somebody. And there's Helen, hey, sitting, just nobody talking to at all. And I thought, geez, this is my chance. So I just stopped over. I went over there and I said, excuse me, my name is Robert Hayes. And she couldn't hear it because it was kind of noisy. And she said, Robert Chase? And I said, no, Hayes. She said, Hayes. And I said, yeah. I said, I was going to come over and say, say, hi, Aunt Helen. And she said, oh, I wish you would have. And I said, I just did. And she said, oh, you're so cute. And she said to James, of course, his name is Hayes. And he said, really? Yeah. He, he was totally uninterested. And then, and then, anyway, I told her how much I absolutely loved her and thank you for everything that, that she'd done for all actors, actors, uh -huh. actresses, everybody, uh -huh. and how wonderful she was. And she was the yeah. sweetest thing next to my mom. She was the sweetest yeah, thing on the planet. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so that was my, my meeting with the legendary Helen Hayes. And wow. that was Love Boat. It was because of Love Boat. That was cool. Yeah. And then you started on the Rockford Files, if I remember. That was... That your first credited my role. first credited role was when I was still in San Diego, and it was on Harry O. Mm. Oh boy, Harry O. with David Jansen, mm. and then I moved up to L.A. and they used to have these Sunday morning shows that were sort of like they weren't soap operas. They were they were like little episodic. I see shorts. But kind of? no, it was yeah. like half hour or okay. uh, half hour, sometimes one hour okay. shows, but usually half hours. Lamp unto my feet, look up and live. All these things that were uh, religious based, but they were they were stories. A guy is a young kid turning towards gangs, and somebody, you know, comes in and changes his life so that okay. he kind of gets on the right path. Just oh. things with a message. Oh, okay. So that was a lot of work for actors yeah, and for bet. young actors. So those were my my Eddie Foy the Third from the famous line of Foys was a casting director, and he said look me up when you get up to LA so I called him and he put me in one of those things I did a couple of those and then uh, not long after that was Rockford Files I think it it was very early on yeah but yeah, uh, yeah Streets of San Francisco oh my gosh uh, Robert oh my gosh. I think they labeled, listed me as Robert B. Hayes and they spelled H-A-Y-E-S instead mm -hmm. of H-A-Y-S and uh, but I did I did over two dozen shows in 18 months, which oh was almost God. unheard of. Wow. 
in my age. And that was from one line, two lines up to guest stars. So I was working like crazy. I couldn't believe how much I'd done. Yeah. Well, that is cool. Um, anything else? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, well, we appreciate your time well, talking to us. Well, I appreciate you guys all coming down here to uh, and you're new harass to this. me. I think it was fun. It was you're nice. New. You're new to this Comic Con circuit. Newbie. I'm a newbie. I've never been here before. It's, uh, it's third. Third, third one, yeah. Well, I did, uh, the, which was the first year they ever had it, a few weeks ago, a month ago, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. So we did that, and that was brand new, and so it was getting adjusted to it. It was, you know, trying to figure it out. Are you going to do more of these, do you think? Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I'm just trying to. Well, but you have surely to. Surely you're going to do more of these. Surely well, you have to more. do the ones that are. Uh, the, the Louisville show was themed for Doctor Who. Oh. So oh. it wasn't really. I mean, everybody, lines of people were coming up to me. Oh. They wanted to shake hands and meet me, but everybody was going to see Doctor Who. So it really didn't do any good to go there so you have to go to the shows where you are sort of where they want to come and see you right I see. so uh, I'm hoping that I can get Julie who is interested in doing it yeah. and uh, maybe get uh, you know several of the other people my buddy Dave Leisure was one of the Hare Krishnas and uh-huh. to get you know the black dudes and uh, Al White was the big black uh-huh. dude Norm I think it would be love lovely to get Norm Gibbs also but I don't know if he, he heard that he hurt himself, so he might be physically kind of like healing. So we'll see about that, but uh, I thought that would be fun. It would have been great to be able to have, you know, Leslie and Peter and Lloyd, and, but, uh, but they're all gone now, so, so, so we'll see. All right. Well, again, thank you. 